What is up, everyone, and welcome back. 2019 is firmly in our rear view. The 2020s have begun, and today we're going to talk about my top 10 records of 2019, and I had a couple of major criteria for the list. The first and the biggest one being that every record I covered, or or every record that, I, that is on my top 10 list has to be an album that I've covered in some way on the channel. Either done a track, done the record. So there's records that I love from 2019 that I simply did not cover on the channel. None of those are going to make it. Though one of them is going to make it on into the honorable mentions section. Now, the other major criteria just truly is how much enjoyment I get out of the record. How much do I listen to it? And that's with any any major record for me. Is it a favorite? How much do I go back to it? How much do I listen to it? How much does it factor into my daily and weekly listening? Every record that I have here gets listened to frequently. And some wind up being, tracks wind up being listened to several days a week in a gym playlist. So, honorable mentions. And this one was surprising for me. I didn't expect it to end up here. I've been in love with the band since the late 90s, back when they released Steel Bath Suicide. That out, that band is soil work, and the record is Verkleiden. I think it's a good record. It's a really enjoyable record, but I don't go back and listen to it as much as I do The Ride Majestic or Natural Born Chaos or Living Infinite, or Panic Broadcast, and some other other stuff like figure number five. So typically when I do listen, when I do go grab a soil work record, it's not Burke Layton. Part of the reason for that is Dirk Viburen, their drummer for several years, absolutely amazing player, got a fantastic offer to drum for Megadeth and he's no longer in the band. That removes that incredibly unique perspective that he has the swing and movement of his drum passages even the really fast aggressive stuff he just has a different way of playing and a different feel their new drummer bastion thirstgard is quite good but he just doesn't have that same feel for me and the drums sound a little more textbook and have a little bit of that less of that personality that i'm so used to for much of the later period soil work records and because of that, it holds the record back for me a little bit. And I think there's other records on my top 10 list that I listen to far more. The next record that makes my honorable mentions list is one that I didn't get a chance to cover on the channel as much as I wanted to. And that is In Furry. They are a Nashville, Tennessee-based death metal band. And these guys are amazing. Their new record, The End of an Era, is fantastic. It's a monstrous, well-written, pummeling death metal record. And I truly enjoy it. But because I didn't make it, because I did not cover it on the channel, it's not going to make it into my top 10 list. So that's unfortunate. They still released a hell of a record. I still highly recommend checking it out. It is up on Spotify. Go give them some love. The very first band that makes my top 10 list, and the top 10 list, I, I have to be honest, it's still a toss up here and there with placement. I revisited it, I recently tried to cheat this yesterday, and the top one list has changed slightly. I'm gonna cheat here, which I didn't think I was gonna do originally, but I'm cheating because the band deserved it. The first record on the top 10 list is Portugal's own Booty Trap. And of course, you're going to see a lot of Portuguese bands on my list. I cover them quite a bit. But Booby Trap are a crossover thrash band from Portugal. They have a very 80s crossover sound. If you're a fan of crossover thrash, this stuff should be in your wheelhouse. And you, it should be on your Spotify playlist. You should be checking them out. I did, the, I did a video for their track, Full of Shit. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. They mix in fun and cynicism and wit with just killer head banging, beer swilling, whiskey shooting crossover. Outstanding stuff. 
killer artwork on that record. Some of their stuff will wind up on the wall behind me when I finally get that wall going with promotion, promoting all these killer bands I have. Stuff from, looking forward to that. The record is fantastic, and it's highly worth the time if you just want something fun. The next band is another Portuguese band. In fact, we're looking at several here. It's, the band is Shadow Mare. The records is Shades of the Untold. They're from the southern part of Portugal. And the record gives me a lot. At first, I was surprised. The mix is dirty. It's rough. I wouldn't mind a little bit better mix. But even with all with those flaws, this it's still a really good record. It's still a really enjoyable record. They have this great mix of thrash and like 80s style traditional metal mixed in with melodic death metal and some technical elements. I love that raw, aggressive vocal. I, I love that it's not over-processed and it really lets the actual tones, the registers of the voice shine through. I hear the potential so much and the record has just become one that is really easy to listen to. When I toss it on, I tend to just let it go straight through. And to me, that's always the mark of a great record. It gives me tasty licks. It gives me well done drum work. It gives me dynamics and really cool passages, all stuff that are important to me when I'm listening to a record in its entirety. And it's just good stuff. Those guys hit my number nine spot. Once again, from Portugal, and actually getting ready to do some shows with Shadow Mare, is Soul of Anubis. And the record, The Last Journey. Soul of Anubis are a stoner, sludgy, doom metal band from Portugal. The record is incredibly well mixed. It was handled by... Miguel Teresco from Demigod Recordings, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Outstanding mix, outstanding tones, crushing, sludgy grooves. They just, it's kind of that, it's kind of like eating real hearty stew. It just sticks to your ribs, man. It just gets into you. Those, those big, doomy hook, riffs are so hooky and hummable. The drums are fantastic. There's great fills. The bass is low and rumbly. I really like the attack from the vocals. And it's a record, the more I listen to it, the more I don't want to stop. Just a very, very strong, very, very enjoyable, very cohesive record. And it certainly deserves more recognition. They're a fantastic band that's doing a more modernish sound to what they're to what the doom slash stoner slash sludge that they're doing, and it's outstanding stuff, man. You guys are missing out if you haven't heard it yet, so please do. It's up on Spotify. The number seven record comes in once again on the Portuguese side of things. It is the Portuguese progressive death metal band, Destroyers of All, with Vile Manifesto. I gave a couple of copies of this away in 2019, and it's a wicked record. It's got some very, it, it mixes progressive death metal elements with hints of black metal and thrash, and it is just a multi-track Aural Assault on the Senses. World-class drum work. Fantastic dynamic vocals. I don't think Mateus gets enough credit sometimes for just how much, how many different styles of attack he has in his, in his vocal arsenal. Standout guitar and bass work throughout the entire record. And it's just a pummeling dynamic piece of work. Dynamics are always a thing with me. I don't like tracks that just stay slow. I don't like tracks that are fat, that are just blisteringly fast from start to finish. I want to have tempo changes and shifts 
and fills and all sorts of stuff to keep the songs busy so I don't get bored. And these tracks just kick your ass. Really well written, really well played, fantastic mix on it from Joao at Golden Jack Studios. Joao also plays for Portuguese Thrasher's Terror Empire on drums. And the mix is fantastic. I'm a big fan. Matter of fact, both Miguel and Joao are probably my two favorite engineers in Portugal. They just have such a great feel for what they're mixing and they have differing styles. Great stuff. It's a great record and been really incredibly happy with it. Incredibly happy to be able to give some con some of it away. Next up, my number six record of 2019 is hailing from Moscow, Russia. It is Be Under Arms and the record Red Wave, Red Wave is coming. And the record is fantastic. It shows so much growth in the band as far as songwriting and performance goes from 2017's Evil Tales in the North Country. I was truly blown away by it when I finally got the chance to listen to it. And I've continued to listen to it straight through consistently for the past couple of weeks. It's just a really outstanding, very dynamic record. It's very ambitious. They, brought, they bring in more elements to their sound than they have before. Some really fantastic clean vocals and lower register stuff from co-vocalist Vladimir. Anna is her usual incredibly dynamic, clean and aggressive range self. Musicianship-wise, the band have stepped their game up. There's some great melodies, some really strong, aggressive passages, and some really haunting emotion twisting lyrics it's a fantastic concept record it's very well done and it's certainly one of the easiest to listen to metalcore records i have gotten my hands on in quite some time and this is the record that absolutely knocked soil works verk lighten out of my top 10 and it's continued to climb further and further up the ratings for me to the point where it sits firmly at number six number five i cheated here and i'm gonna be quite honest about that i cheated here i didn't intend it to wind up being like this but it's a coin flip for me on which of these records sits in my top five spot each day depending on what my mood is and how I feel and what I want out of a record. Those two bands and two records are Muck and Colorado Piano, Broken Piano. Just, man, what a record. It's so powerful. It's Muck in a nutshell. If, you, if you're a fan of Muck, they're them being a Japanese visual K band. Again, very dynamic songwriting, lots of shifts, lots of different style usage. And these guys play off it so well. Fantastic world-class vocals, bass, drums, and guitar work. Great usage of electronics. And it wraps so much of their sound together in a focused 42 or 43 minute package. If you listen to the record just without one of the special editions. It's just an utterly amazing experience from track one to track 10 just full of dynamic songs that come that hit you with one thing and shift into something else and come out of the end a completely different way powerful imagery powerful lyrics if you find my for my first listen on them you there is a link to a fantastic translation by whsm so that's available and just a masterpiece of dynamic visual K. Now, the tie here is for 
Japanese progressive rock band Soko Ninmaru and their EP Isen. And truly, I don't know which record I like more. If I want a short, compact, take me to different places record, then I'm going to listen to Isen. It's probably 23 of the best minutes of my life in a post rock or post punk or post hardcore, depending on how really how well you want to look at it. EP. It's just so rich and full of amazing moments, great vocals, fantastic musicianship, the way they managed to string this technicality into the rest of the record. It's it's spellbinding. It's impressive. So many levels and still keep it catchy and accessible. It's fantastic stuff. Both the guitar player and the bass player do fantastic work vocally. And once again, thank you to WHSM for, even though he's not a huge fan of the band, at my request, he translated the lyrics. They're the only translation to English I can find of this record online. So they're there. Did a fantastic job. And if you go out and look at my full video, my full first listen for that one you'll find the lyrics to a google drive link there as well just amazing and it was so tough to figure that out and truly it's a day-by-day -day feel thing for me we're putting them together so call it call it 11 call me cheating it's my channel i don't care i'm happy with it <laughs> Ah, <sighs> number four. Number four is kind of cheating in a way, too, because number four is chapters two and three of the Anne trilogy by the incredible Dutch symphonic progressive metal band Ex Libris. Now, the entire, the entire trilogy would make my top ten list if it was released all in 2019. However, the first chapter and was released in 2018. However, chapters two and three came out in 2019. So because of that, they both make it onto the list and they are both absolutely and utterly amazing. The whole trilogy is one of the best co combinations of EPs I have ever heard. Hyperbole aside, if you are a fan of operatic vocals, of world-class, bombastic, multi-octave multi opera, opera vocals, and sung by an incredibly powerful female voice in a rock and metal context, then why haven't you heard this yet? That's my question. They're amazing. The fact they're self-released is even more impressive. They crowd, the band did a great crowdfunding drive for it. They even went out and for the, the major packages, played different, played acoustic performances in different fans' homes. Our Patreon Scott was able to have one of those concerts in his house. You lucky, lucky, lucky man. And got a chance to, sp to spend some time with them even got some car karaoke going on, which is awesome. And these records are amazing. Diane Van Gerschen is just a special lady. She seems incredibly nice down to earth and her vocals and her ability to touch the listener and tell you a story and convey all of this emotion into these powerful historical takes on a record on these events are amazing if you're a fan of stuff like killer angels the book by michael sahara which gave a more story-like approach to gettysburg it feels similar because they're taking they're putting their take on Anne bolin on anastasia romanova and the story of anne frank and they're just so powerful also, the musicians in the band are world-class. They're all top-notch. They do a great job of tailoring the sound to 
the EP. They had to get heavier for Anne Frank because they wanted to, that to be even darker than Anne, than Anne Bolin and the Anastasia Romanova one. Were. There's some great making of videos up and around they've put up over the past two years. They're really worth checking out if you're really into it because it shows just how much thought, effort, and time they put into giving the fans the experience that those EPs create. And if you can listen to all of them in one sitting, I tell you what, you are a far better human being than I am because I can't do it. It's They're that powerful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, number three, a couple of records left. This one comes from Portugal. It's progressive metals, modern metal, metalcore. I don't know what you want to call these guys. Stalwarts in the band Aquila out of Porto, Portugal. I love these guys. I, they're amazing people. I have. I've had a chance to spend many moons talking to Miguel and Miguel, guitars and vocals respectively. They're incredible musicians. This is a fantastic record. It is an in-your-face, modern, groovy, metalcore-like record. There's atmospheres, there's textures, there's so much energy and soul and power to it. And it has an uplifting message from track one to the last track. So while you're listening to it, you're banging your head, you can feel good and you can find inspiration to push yourself forward and better yourself as a human being. I certainly take tracks like Before Sunrise and Overcoming to my heart and it's just an inspirational, amazing record. Their stuff makes it into every one of my workout playlists. I listen to I listen to the record straight through when I'm out training for the ruck march I'm doing in a couple of months. It's just fantastic. I do wish the mix was a little tighter in some ways. The bass is a little bit more a little more forward than I'd like it, and the guitars are backed off just a touch. But it's it's a record that just gets into me and it's an amazing it's an amazing disc and i can't say enough good things about it it makes my number three spot number two man <laughs> what an amazing record this one is and i truly didn't expect to form such a personal attachment to it the way i have the record is Seed. It is by Porto Portugal's own Blame Zeus. They are a progressive rock band with a fantastic vocalist by the name of Sandra Oliveira, who is an amazing person. She is married to their drummer, Ricardo Oliveira, who's an amazing person. And the rest of the band. Paulo, Tiago, and I'm missing a name, and you could punch me later. I'm sorry. <laughs> All these players are fantastic. The record is one of the most powerful, access er, uh, accessible, progressive rock records I've heard in quite some time. I got an advanced copy of it in September of 2016. The album came out in November and being a part of the release cycle, doing both written and a video review for it almost felt like a part of it. It just, it's an amazing 10 tracks, so many fantastic elements. These incredible, it's full of incredible musicianship, incredibly intelligent lyrics. Sandra vocally has this way about her of just connecting to a lyric, making everything so powerful and so believable. And it's, it's amazing. You can tell the musicians are school trained. Several of them teach music. 
You can hear it in the way they write, the way they structure things, and the little fills, the nuances. So many of these great runs and riffs and accents are understated at points. There's a fantastic track on there called Down to Our Bones, which features Rui from Ramp and just one of those slow burning, ass kicking tracks. Fantastic stuff. And it's a record that truly touches me emotionally. And that's why it's my number two. And certainly not something I expected. Number one. Number one is a record that I knew that the day it was released and the day I got a chance to hear it would probably be my number one record. One of my absolute favorite bands of all time. It's the Mighty Evergrey and the record The Atlantic. It's such a powerful, progressive metal record. It's just well written from start to finish. It flows. It's the lyrics speak of loss and moving on and pushing forward. A lot of it was written about Tom England's divorce from his wife and former backing vocalist covering to England, and you can feel that pain and that agony in there. It's a very, very powerful record, and it's well recorded. They did a lot of it as a band. It's just hard to describe. If you're a fan of Evergrey, you're going to love it. You probably are. You've probably listened to it as much as I have. It just peaks and valleys and different emotions and textures. Fantastic riff work, outstanding drumming. Some of Tom's best vocals I've heard on a record. The entire band is simply on great solos by both Tom and Henrik. Outstanding bass work, great keyboard work, drum work. It's a record that I just cannot stop going back to. And there's nothing else that came out this year that came out in 2019 that I listened to as much as I listened to The Atlantic. So it winds up my number one spot for very good reason for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you guys get a, got a chance to see some records that you didn't expect on the list. I certainly didn't expect this list to turn out that way. I knew Evergrey would be there. I didn't know anything else would wind up. So it's been an amazing year for me. Amazing, amazing records, fantastic releases. So happy to finally get this shot and share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you all so very much. Thank you to all the bands who released amazing records this year. Thank you so much for you for allowing me to cover them and asking me to cover them and even giving me advanced copies. Truly wonderful. I'm honored to, uh, to be part of your consideration for your album releases. Thanks, guys. I love all of you, bands and fans and subscribers alike. I truly appreciate every single one of you. Thank you to my law enforcement, military, veterans, and first responders, which you guys do every day. You guys have been awesome. I have been Bald Man. I'll see you in the next one. Be excellent to each other and keep headbanging.